Good evening, Internet, and welcome to Top Shift 116. Now, as you can see here, I am using my alternative account, which is Commander C. Hutchison. That's her up in the corner. And this is uh, the September update. Now, as you can see, things seem quite standard here in at the moment. Um, I am wondering whether or not I've lost my control... Oh no, I've got my controls back. Let's have a look. Uh, controls should come up with custom. Yep, so I haven't lost my bindings. That's good. And here we now have a whole load of new stuff that's arrived in the options. We've got the graphics and the audio, that's fine. Network, I don't remember seeing the network stuff before. That's quite handy. Uh, credits, that's new. Um, so, right. So we've got game extras. This must be the new store and livery sections. So we can buy arcs here, which takes us out of the game, which is a bit of a surprise it takes us into a uh, into a web browser which I was not expecting still um, things seem to be a little bit busy there at the moment I think everybody's just looking at it uh, we have a store which well here we have it we have the store and we can see an awful lot of these um, particular uh, ship skins and so we've got let's see everything we've got packs we've got cockpit customization decals paint jobs ship kits nameplates detailing and cockpit voice assistance and doesn't seem to be coming back at the moment detailing no oh look so we've got our, our vehicle so let's yeah, let's stick with the Cobra Mark 3 it says hold to rotate hold what to rotate toggle preview none of those things seem to work packs I think we've got a little bit of a problem accessing the store. Oh! So, homeworks. Ah, there we are. You can now see the different bobbleheads, cockpit lights, and the prices. So, th there's quite a few options there. So, see. Ship kits for everything. So these are all the ships. I was hoping they'd have a ship kit for the clipper, but I don't think there will be. So there's there's the clipper. I guess the bindings have got to have got to be set up for that. And apply customizations to your current ship and hangar vehicles. Well, as I've got um only the Cobra. I don't think I've got any Scarab customizations. No, I haven't, which is why it's still silver. The Cobra Mark III should have a couple. Quite a lot, actually. Uh, no, I can change my name and ID panel, which is fine. It's a bit of a shame because I would like to change the livery. There's a couple of things on the, on this particular ship that I would have liked to have changed. And I can't seem to do it from here. So I think there's still a bit of a problem with it. So back to the main menu. Continue open play because this character will always be in open play. So this is the September update. That, um, effectively, we've got the new store 
which I've just had a quick look through. And we've also got, um, effectively, in here we should have training. So we've got the training simulations. Right, that's pretty standard stuff. And that is the pilot assessment. So this is the um, the new pilot assessment tutorial that's supposed to be completely voiced. So let's give it a whirl. And straight into a sidewinder. That's in. Oh, hello. Make yourself comfortable while we finish some preliminary ship checks. My name's Theo Acosta, and I'll be running your Pilots Federation evaluation. Most Ooh. pilots assigned to me earn their license, so as long as you follow my instructions, you'll be a commander in no time. Excellent. Oh, and uh, before you ask, I may sound like an Imperial, but uh, I'm actually from an independent system. Well, that's a nice little bit of flavor, that. Today we'll be covering the basics of flight control, combat, and frame shift drive use. This Sidewinder has been installed with a specialized computer that'll take control at certain points. Mostly you'll follow a series of objectives to guide your actions. These are shown in the info panel at the top right of the head of display. Okay, you're good to go. Select auto launch from the options ahead of you when you're ready. Look no hands. allows us to appreciate the good things in life. Other applicants are departing for their own evaluations, but this isn't a race. Each of the coming stages can be completed at your own pace. Well, this is nice and easy. I'm not in head look mode. That. Oh, they've certainly they've certainly shown off there. Remarkable, isn't it? For so long humanity gazed up at the stars in wonder. We're not distracted by one of Earth's many wars. And now we glide between them without a second thought. Mm. Sounds good. Ah, here we are. Your first task is to demonstrate basic ship movements. The ship's trajectory is primarily controlled by pitch, yaw, and roll. Perform each of these now. Right, so I'm going to... Let's see, am I... Oh, I can't look about, so let's roll. Uh, pitch. Good. Now increase your throttle to accelerate forwards. Okay. Everything else has been locked out at the moment, so... Decrease the throttle to resume a stationary position. There we go. Your throttle can also be pulled back from zero to engage reverse thrust. Oh, must admit I do like the new chevrons. As before, push the throttle in the opposite direction to cease moving. Mm. Inputs confirmed. Looks like you've got the hang of individual controls. Let's see if you can put them all together. Your next task is to guide your ship through a series of checkpoints. Head towards the course, following the target indicator. Right. The course weaves through an orbital structure and is designed for the novice pilot. Well, I'll point out at this, uh, this moment. Um... Only the basic controls are enabled. Things like altering the uh, uh, the power distributor or hitting boost, they don't seem to be responding at all. So, um, I don't think... Accelerate through the first checkpoint when you're ready to start. I don't think we can use this as a race course, which is a bit of a shame. And we're off. There's no time limit, so maintain a comfortable speed while you familiarize yourself with the controls. 
nice and easy, does it? Oh, I still want to boost. Rolling and pitching together is the most efficient way of turning rapidly. Oh, I like the way they've done that. You've got to line up the the, uh, the icon so that it's... Oh. Remember, put it in the blue in order to turn in properly. It's good practice to consider the angle and speed of your approach. See the blue marker beside the throttle gauge. This indicates the optimum turning speed. Nice and easy. Nothing too strenuous, to be honest. You're approaching a particularly sharp turn, so I advise slowing down to prevent any mishaps. Oh, I like that. I do like that. I like the fact you're going through these tunnels. What are we up to? 19, 20? Your ship's boost function greatly increases your speed, but use it wisely. Oh, hang on. If you feel like you aren't in full control, zero your throttle and take a moment to get your bearings. I didn't see where that target was. So one That's the last checkpoint. The Sidewinder is an agile craft, and you handled it well. Hmm. I don't think I did. I had one collision. A has appeared on the sensor display in the center of your dashboard. This represents a nearby beacon, which you'll soon scan as part of your evaluation. Oh. Target the beacon before we continue. You're going to use your ship's data link scanner to analyze the beacon, but you need to deploy hard points first. Okay, deploy my high points. Good. Most external modules are installed on hard points, including weapons. Control is back with you. The beacon is relatively small, so you'll need to position yourself close to it. Watch your speed here. We intend to scan the object, not become one with it. Ooh, I got told off. So that's kind of overgoing, isn't it? You can scan the beacon now. Yep. Well done. The data link scanner is a versatile tool that connects with network interfaces and various data points. You need to move to another area of this star system to continue your assessment, pilot. Rather than travel for the next year using your thrusters, you can employ the ship's frameshift drive to increase your speed by a few orders of magnitude. Mm. First, ensure that the ship is correctly secured. Your landing gear, cargo scoop, and hard points must all be retracted. When you're ready, throttle up and engage supercruise. Well, that's pretty easy. I do like the way that it tells you what the controls are that you've already mapped. They're still using my custom bindings. All readouts look good. You're now accelerating towards a velocity comparative to the speed of light, measured in C. Supercruise is used to navigate within a star system, allowing you to cover significant distances in minutes. Usually you'll retain control in Supercruise, but on this occasion, your ship's computer is following a preset path. Fair enough. This is a good time to familiarize yourself with a couple of the cockpit panels available to you. 
In the top left of your hut is the comms panel, oh, which displays pilot communications and contacts across several channels. Right. The top right is your info panel. Entries here mostly relate to your ship's status, computer messages, and events happening around you. Oh, that's new. That's the new panel that they were on about. Ah, there we go. Welcome to light speed. Yay! Do like that. There's subtle changes here. All right, I am under full automated control at the moment. Watch the cool. distance and speed markers on the dashboard. These are used to help you accurately disengage at your destination. So that's the time on target, which is underneath the combat training area. We'll introduce the basics of combat. Several static and mobile targets will be provided around a decommissioned megaship. Ooh, cool. We'll also cover some situational information about weaponry and target tracking. And yes, you'll get to shoot those weapons you saw earlier. Sounds good. Now what I'm going to do, actually, is um, I'm going to let my... Oh, hello. What's going on here? Astronomical bodies have a gravitational effect on the FSD, reducing your ship's speed. The closer the body, the greater the effect. That's fall I've fallen for that for quite a while. Oh, look at that. That looks quite nice. I'm using my ED tracker here, so it's... Oh, hello. Right. The frameshift drive is disengaged. Welcome to the combat zone. Before you start shooting, however, try analysing the megaship with a data link scanner. Okay. There we go. Well done. It's often worth scanning objects you're unfamiliar with to learn more about them. Next, you need to activate your weapons by cycling to a different fire group. Oh, that's easy enough. You'll notice that your weapons are now listed on your HUD. Fire groups allow you to manage your hard points efficiently. Let's begin the combat evaluation. Destroy several of the canisters. Weapons li I do like that. Weapons live, it says. All weapons have an effective range, so you may need to move closer here. Your ship has two weapons installed. Make sure you use both your primary and secondary triggers. Thrusters are particularly useful for navigating around large structures. Why not give them a try? Your cannon will automatically reload until the ammunition supply runs out. Meanwhile, your laser will fire until the capacitor is depleted, at which point it will need to recharge. Quota achieved. Let's dial up the challenge a notch, shall we? <laughs> An unmanned craft has arrived nearby. These drones are used by the Pilots' Federation as target practice, and they're quite harmless. To continue, bring the craft into your sights and open fire. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a sidewinder. He's evading. And that's the end of him. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. I recommend is. targeting your opponent during combat. Notice how your reticules move towards your target. Your ship's gimbal weapons offer a degree of aiming assistance.
Adlook is still not disay uh, enabled, so... Consider me impressed. Your final target has dropped into the area. This time your opponent will fight back, but its damage capability has been greatly reduced. Your target will not react until it registers shield damage. Engage when ready. Right, so if we get in behind him... Oh, he's rated competent, this one. Yeah, he's using multi cannons against a shielded ship, so you know, nothing much to worry about there. Oh, and spinny, 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 boom. Oh, that's the end of him. Very true. For advanced combat information, you should refer to the pilot's handbook, which we'll cover in more detail soon. The next step of your evaluation involves a hyperspace jump to a neighboring star system. On this occasion, your ship's computer has selected your destination for you. We'll cover selecting destinations manually soon. The mass lock indicator okay. on the bottom right of the dashboard is active. This means a large object is in close proximity, preventing you from engaging the FSD. To resolve this, Throttle up to move a safe distance away from the megaship. Remember, you can boost to temporarily increase your ship's speed. Oh, I just did. The mass lock indicator has gone out. Yay. When you are ready to travel light years in seconds, engage the FSD. Right. Oh. Forgot. Put away your guns first. See, even an expert like me can forget about that from time to time. we go. Oh, and we've got our head look available again. This is, yeah. Right. Oh, lost the head look. Yeah, because there's a sun. This time we'll employ the supercruiser assist module to guide your approach. Open the external interface panel to your left and select the navigation tab. Highlight the starport in the location list and then select supercruiser assist. It's the second option. With the destination selected, throttle up and aim towards your target. The compass to the left of the sensor display will help you orient yourself. Let's take a moment to review the interface panels either side of your chair. Good. Your ship is now bound for Quello Station. The external panel is primarily used to interact with the galaxy around you. For example, you can access maps, display contracts, and review nearby objects. Meanwhile, the internal panel displays information about you and your ship. You can adjust module functions, check your records, and access the codex, among other things. Seems quite straightforward enough. And we just sit here and let the let the Super Cruise Assist module handle the the busy work. I mean, I've been using the Super Cruise uh, Super Cruise Assist for quite a while on the, this new account, and I must admit, it does 
it does allow you to relax a little bit more. Oh, hello. I can't look at my pilot and I can't look about so it does go to show you that they've, they've decided to restrict um, a tutorial so you follow this set path oh. well there I am I do like they've chosen this particular type of space station. Good. Ease off the throttle and hold position here. Oh, and try not to block the access corridor. We'll be using the docking computer for this landing. You can always dock manually in future, of course, but practice in a training simulation first. Whichever method you use, all ships must seek docking permission before approaching a landing pad. To request docking permission, open your external interface panel and select the contacts tab. Then select Quello Station in the list, followed by request docking in the information panel. Docking permission authorized. Docking assist has been engaged. You've been assigned landing pad 3. Oh. Go point towards your designated pad. Ships need to be within 7.5 kilometers of a starport for a docking request to be considered. And relax to the nice, soothing strains of the Blue Danube. You still can't access the external cameras at this point, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, can we look about? Yes, we can look about at least. It does give you... Uh, this will probably be very impressionable on a new player, just getting the scale and the size of these objects which you're going to interact with. The docking computer will now demonstrate a safe landing procedure. Let's review what it's doing. Landing gear must be deployed. The related dashboard indicator lights up if this has been done. Of course, it's green on the inside because this is an agricultural station, isn't it? And there are the uh, trees and gardens that help in a create moment, the. The sensor display will switch to the precision approach display, which helps you accurately set belly down on the landing pad. If that's the first time I've heard that, belly down. Yay. The is being assigned to you as I speak. We just need to finalize your credentials. Enter the hangar to exit this evaluation. Okay. It's time to blaze your own trail across the galaxy. The manner in which you do so is up to you. Now, at the end of that simulation, um, at the first time, it will take you to the starting point uh, in the newbie area. So that is you effectively ready to start. Right, so what's my first impressions of that? Well, quite reasonable. It's pretty concise. It hopefully, 
couple of tries of that and you'll you know you'll get the hang of flying the ship and it does cover a lot of the basics um of course you will need more practice afterwards but overall i think that is that is a vast improvement over the the starter experience that was there before in the meantime i'm at this refinery now this particular commander is let's see whether we still get my livery or livery or whatever they want to call it now i do not seem to be able to access the the livery menu at the moment so I think Frontier must be working on it. And I seem to be stuck. So I think that's definitely one for the uh, Arc Balance failed to update, it says. Good, well, can, does that mean I can go back now? No. I think I might have been locked into the delivery section. No, 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 I'm afraid, I think, I think we're going to have to call that it. So as you can see, that there's still a couple, there's a couple of issues with the latest patch. They're going to have to be looked at. Um, I'm definitely going to be raising that one as a, uh, as a, as an issue. Um, it's probably because everybody's hitting the store at the same time. And if there are three million players all hitting the store at the same time, it's bound to cause a bit of a bit of an issue. But for the moment, um, that's a quick look at the the new player experience. And uh, thanks for joining me.